um, I have little appropriate sized pieces of earthworm cut up. I have some fresh dechlorinated water here for my hands for dipping before I handle the froglets. Here we have little froglets that are ready to be pulled. They're almost done absorbing their tails. And so we're going to take them out, put them in their new fresh deli cups, and offer them some food for the first time. Um, sometimes you'll get a froglet whose tail is almost absorbed, but its little mouth is not quite yet fully formed. This little guy looks good. His tail is almost absorbed. So you need to grasp a piece of worm. And the best thing I do, I wiggle it around and basically try to tease them into biting it. Once they bite it, they usually figure out that it's good, it's food, and they'll eat it. On occasion, they'll spit it out. If you get a stubborn one like that, um, give it a few minutes, put it aside while you try to feed another frog, and then try it again. It's all about patience and perseverance. But once they figure out it's food and... Once you start feeding them from the tongs, they will start to react as soon as they see the tongs. They will know that food is coming. Um, when they're this small, we offer them food nightly. They don't always eat nightly, but it's best to offer it to them because this is a crucial growing point for them. It's when they need the most food and the most nutrients, so it's best. Now, you see he, he ate the worm. He looks a little thin still, so I may give him time to get that down and offer him another piece. Um, but as it goes now, we're going to put them into just little, I believe these are six ounce deli cups. Twelve. Twelve? Twelve or fifteen. Twelve or fifteen ounce deli cups. This is what we grow them out in. They will go in there once they've, they've eaten. They go into these. We clean them nightly because they they exude a lot of waste, a lot of urate, a lot of feces. Once they start eating, they are prolific with it. So you want to make sure that you clean these out. Again, always use dechlorinated water. Never use distilled water. They absorb everything through their skins and the distilled water has nothing in it, no vitamins, no anything. And so as a result, it will leach out what little vitamins the frogs actually have. So you want to make sure that you use, we use Prime, but you can use pretty much any dechlorinator that they have on the market for fish as well. Uh, we stick with Prime because we like it, okay. it works well. Just another little froglet to let you know. We're trying to feed this one too. Oh, good job, he ate right away. Some of them, you can see his little tail is not quite fully absorbed, but his mouth is fully formed. Um, you will sometimes get a froglet whose tail is even less fully absorbed. Like this one, you see he's still got that little tail. Uh, and his mouth looks to be, oops, come here guy. His mouth looks to be formed well, so we will attempt focused to feed him. Hmm? Yeah, focused on oh, sorry, here. <laughs> come here, little one. You have to be gentle with them. They are small, they're tiny. So just gentle handling is okay. Get a container for this other one. Now, once they've started to eat, you want to be careful because they are highly cannibalistic and will, if given a chance, usually try to eat each other. And so let's see if this little one is ready and willing to take a piece of worm. Now, we purchase night crawlers. You want to make sure when you get your night crawlers that they are dye free or chemical free you can purchase them usually at Walmart uh, Petco and PetSmart have them as well these are Canadian night crawlers from Walmart he's not ready to eat you can see that he's puffing up he's getting defensive 
um, which is basically telling me you're bugging me. And they will do that. Sometimes the teasing works to get them to eat. If you have um, a frog that you purchased that's about quarter size or small, so, <laughs> and they are stubborn to eat, it can sometimes be a result of stress. You need to give them a day or two to get used to their new enclosure. You want to make sure that it's a smaller enclosure because they get stressed out by big wide open spaces. It's not what they're used to. But the tickling with the worm on their lips can help sometimes. They also get picky about the piece of worm, uh, whether it comes from either the head or tail of the worm. So you can also, as a result, offer a different piece of worm. But you see, again, he's going into that defensive posture. And I don't want to stress him out too much, so I'll tickle and tease a little bit. But once he's turned away two, three times, I just let it be. We will then attempt to feed him tomorrow night. So now we have a little brown-green, whose tail is mostly absorbed. And we're going to attempt to feed him his first meal. So let's see. Oh my goodness, what a defense response. See? But he took it. Because he realized that, hmm, that might be food. <laughs> and some of them get really aggressive. I call them little bulldogs because they attack their little piece of worm for all the world. Like they are some huge, big monster. And, uh, and the worm is its defenseless prey. Which is pretty kind of cute. They also will sometimes use their front arms and their little hands to manipulate the food into their mouth or, if they want to reject it, out of their mouth as well. Okay, this is for size comparison. These guys have uh, been tadpoles and they're absorbing their tails and we're pulling them out of the out of their tadpole container so that we can now put them in their own little deli cups. Now, for comparison, this is a penny under the container and you can see just how small these guys are. Let me see here. You can see that he fits sitting on the penny. And you can still see penny around him. So they are small. We are going to try and feed him his very first meal and see if he's ready for that. Oh my goodness. There he goes into the defensive posture and he ate it. Now let's see if he'll keep it or reject it. As I said, you can see that he's using his little front feet right now. Let's see if he's going to use them to pull it in or out, and it looks like in. <laughs> you see, he's using his hands to stuff it in. And that, as small as that piece of worm was, that was a pretty substantial meal uh, for the size of this froglet. Uh, it's surprising how aggressive they can be at feeding as small as they are but it's great to see them eat. They're very healthy. We try to keep a good eye on them because in nature things can go wrong pretty quickly. Now as far as their food goes, we will dust their bits of worm with vitamin supplements um, and with calcium with D3 in it. Now we don't do them both at the same time. We usually do them separately but you want to do it maybe twice a week at the most because too much of a good thing is bad, just as bad as too little. Um, of course, all the reptile amphibian issues with MBD um, and, you know, uh, just vitamin overdose, that can be a bad thing. Um, and they will exhibit signs, the neuro what look like neurological signs. They will sometimes have seizures. Um, 
and it will look like a seizure. Their front, their front legs will go out stiff. Their back legs will also go out stiff. Sometimes they will flip onto their backs. Sometimes they will be a little paralyzed for a minute or two. Those are signs of stress usually. But they can also exhibit those signs when they are either under supplemented or over supplemented. So just keep that in mind. Any questions, we're more than happy to field for you. So please leave comments and questions. Thanks for watching, guys.